When we take a look at value added text, so after you've taken a look at the infographic, there's a lot of information in there and there's a lot of stuff that we need to be aware of about VAT and we need to make sure that we can work with it on a daily basis with all of our accounting processing. What you need to know is that VAT is levied by the government on the supply of goods or services, most goods and most services. So most things that people make and sell and supply have VAT on them. So if I am selling something, I have to charge VAT. The government forces me to charge VAT. So if I sell you something, I have to charge VAT on that item. You'll notice through the process that it talks about from the raw materials through the production phase right up to the customer and you'll see that little cycle and the idea is all along the way as you're making something VAT is added and everybody in that cycle adds VAT and charges VAT on that item and everybody that sells it on to the next person charges VAT and they charge VAT and the next person charges VAT and the next person charges VAT. So this is something that gets added to products all along the production cycle. The moment someone buys something and sells it to someone else, VAT gets added on that process and the next person happens. It is currently done at 14% <clears throat> and we talk about taxable supplies. Before we get into taxable supplies, when we talk about adding VAT all along the process, understand that what the government says is that you need to charge VAT on everything, on all of your taxable supplies. So when you sell something, you need to charge VAT, okay? So you add VAT onto your selling price. So you charge VAT on that item, okay? And then when you take a look at how much VAT you have to pay the government, the government will allow you to deduct all the VAT that you paid when you bought stuff, okay? So the VAT that you end up paying over to the government is not just the VAT that you make on the sales, you deduct all the VAT that you paid when you bought the items. So you can see in the chain as people buy and sell, buy and sell. When I buy something, I pay VAT and therefore I can claim that back from the government. When I sell something, I charge VAT and I pay that to the government. So it's this constant cycle. So when we talk about calculating VAT, when we talk about figuring out how much VAT we actually pay to the government, what we have to ask ourselves is how much VAT did you charge minus how much VAT did you pay? So we've got to make sure that we understand how to calculate these when we put VAT on something and when not. Taxable supplies means any good or service which is chargeable with tax. So taxable supply is a term that you're going to hear quite a bit. <clears throat> and there are two types of taxable supplies. Taxable supplies are either at standard rate or they are zero rated. Most of what you will be doing in your studies are your standard rated. So when we talk about VAT on something, we generally assume that that is a standard rate item, that it is 14%. And there are certain items that are vetted at zero. So it is zero rated VAT. So there's VAT, but instead of being at 14%, it's at 0%. Some of examples of these types of items, brown bread, samp, lentils, maize meal, petrol, crude diesel, and certain exported goods. Some of the ideas behind these, your basic, very, very basic food items are not vetted. There's no value added tax on that. Very unlikely that we're going to be dealing with a lot of these items, so don't worry too much about this. Just remember and understand that VAT can be charged at standard rate, which is 14%, which accounts for most of what we're going to be doing, or VAT can be charged at zero rate. VAT is zero rate, which means that the VAT is at 0%, and that's for those particular items. If we do have zero rated, why on earth would we say that we have VAT at 0%? Why don't we just say that there is no VAT whatsoever? <laughs> the reason we do this is because even though <clears throat> the seller charges VAT at 0%, which means effectively there is no VAT, it allows the seller to still claim VAT on all the purchases they make. So again, think of the cycle. As the person sells something, they charge VAT. And when they buy something, they are paying VAT. So they buy something and they sell it on to someone else. They buy something and they sell it on to someone else. When I buy it from you, I have to pay you VAT. And then when I sell it, I charge VAT. Now what is happening here is that when I buy this from you, I am being charged VAT, you charge me VAT, so I pay VAT, I can claim that back from the government, but when I sell it on to someone else, I don't have to charge VAT. I don't actually have to pay the government anything, which puts me in quite a good position. So zero rated supplies are quite nice because it allows you, even though you don't charge VAT on the goods that you sell, you are still allowed to claim VAT on the goods that you purchase. And that's quite different to exempt supplies, supplies that are not taxable. These are exempted from VAT entirely and that means that for these items when you sell them you charge no VAT and you can also charge or claim no VAT from the input. So when I buy stuff and I have to pay VAT to other people I can't claim that. 
and I don't charge VAT on that either. So you can see the difference between zero rated and exempted is that zero rated, I don't charge VAT, but I can still claim VAT. I don't charge VAT on my sales, but I can still claim VAT on my purchases. If my goods are exempt, it means that I don't charge VAT on my sales and I can't claim VAT on my purchases either. Make sure that you are comfortable with that. What does this mean for us in exams? Or what is this, how does the exam going to look or what type of exam questions are we going to see from this? <clears throat> so far we've looked at the accounting process, we've looked at posting items to the general ledger, we've looked at the trial balance, we've looked at some basic financial statements and we've started looking at the basic processing the, the, the general journals, we've looked at CPJ, CRJ and so far we've ignored the effects of VAT, we have just pretended that it doesn't exist. In reality, obviously, VAT is a reality. It is something that we have to deal with. The entire accounting process must account for VAT and must deal with VAT and take that into account. And all of the items and all of the study unit five questions that we've got here so far, the general journals, the CPJ, the CRJ, all of the stuff that we've done could have VAT implications in them. It could be given to you and say, understand that the company is VATable or is a VAT vendor. That means that if you take a look at your CRJ that you did, we need to take a look at how to do a cash receipts journal and a cash payments journal with VAT as well. We need to realize and we need to learn how to post journals and how to create journals with VAT and where the VAT goes. What do we do with the VAT? How do we account for it? How do we calculate the VAT? Um, and, and what exactly do we do with it? So all of your basic accounting process has to have VAT. There is a possibility in exam questions that they give you a question and they say, please remember or realize that this is a VAT vendor, which means that we need to take VAT into account. Or they may say this person is not a VAT vendor, do not take VAT into account. But all the stuff we've done may have VAT implications. So we now need to add that into the equation and make sure that we know how to do that.